The Canon EOS R6 and EOS R5 were Canon's breakthrough cameras that showed that Canon could compete on mirror in the mirrorless space. The R6 Mark II is the first second generation camera in this series and it shows an extra degree of polish as a result. Headline features are a newly developed 24 megapixel sensor, a faster burst rate up to 40 frames per second in electronic shutter mode, next generation focus, and improved video specs. But is this the mid-level camera to buy if you have around 2,500 US dollars to spend? Find out after a word from our sponsor. Today's episode is brought to you by Ridge, the wallet redefined. Give your aching rear a break and ditch that bulky old wallet full of stuff you don't need and move to a sleek new Ridge wallet made of aluminum, titanium, carbon fiber, or even specialty finishes like 18 karat gold or Damascus steel. It takes up little more room than a credit card, has RFID blocking technology to protect your valuable information, and comes with a lifetime warranty. Ridge wallets hold up to 12 cards, and you can customize them with the included cash strap or money clip. Check out their daily drive combos that pair a killer wallet with a matching key case that gives you similar minimalism for up to six of your keys. Visit Ridge Wallet forward slash Dustin Abbott and use code Dustin Abbott to get 10% off your order plus free shipping worldwide. The R6 Mark II feels very similar in the hand to previous Canon cameras, and that is to say it feels great. It has Canon's typical ergonomics, though there is one change that I have found a bit frustrating. On one sense, it's a positive. There is now an addition of a movie and stills dial that allows you to have a completely separate setup for both stills and movies, but the position is where the on-off button used to be on the left side of the camera. As a byproduct, those of us that have muscle memory with other Canon cameras will find that they continually, instead of turning the camera on or off, instead select video or stills mode. I love the addition of the dial. I just wish they had put on the other side of the camera. We have a very effective 3-inch 1.62 million dot touchscreen that, as typical, is highly responsive. Also, there is a 3.69 million dot EVF, and I will note that Canon has very good EVFs that don't go blurry right before you take the shot like I see on some Sony models. There is a minor change to the joystick to where it now is beveled outward rather than inward. I'm not sure it was a necessary change, but it doesn't make a huge difference either. We have dual UHS-2 card slots on the right side of the camera and a almost identical setup of ports on the left side of the camera. The positive there is that there are now improvements to communications through the USB-C port, including the ability to use the camera as a webcam and also to connect it directly to your phone. On the negative side, we continue to have a micro HDMI port, which is certainly more flimsy than what any of us would like. The R6 Mark II utilizes the same battery and battery grip, but the battery life is improved, now up to 760 shots. I'll also note that Canon's in-body image stabilization, or IBIS, works extremely well, and with the Canon RF 24-105 f4LIS lens I used, it is rated up to 8 stops in the combination of the two things. I'm not sure that I could get 8 stops out of it, but I did see an easy 6 stops, which is better than what I would see in most situations at 105 millimeters. The shutter is another area of improvement. While the mechanical shutter is still limited at 12 frames per second, the electronic shutter has doubled from 20 frames per second to a whopping 40 frames per second. That allows you to capture a lot of serious action, and the electronic shutter speed limit is up to 1 16,000th of a second versus 1 8,000th for the mechanical shutter. The higher resolution point of the 6D Mark II means that the buffer depth is a little bit lower, but you can use compressed RAW or C-RAW to dramatically improve the buffer depth. In this burst, I got 89 shots very quickly, just a couple of seconds, and could have gone much longer. There's also now a RAW burst mode that will actually pre-record for a half second or so before you fully depress the shutter, capturing at 30 frames per second. It's a useful feature to make sure you get that shot you were looking for. 
The autofocus system has inherited a lot of the R3 DNA. We have focus points that cover essentially 100% of the frame in both directions, and I found that tracking is sticky, intuitive, and I love the visual presentation in the viewfinder of the tracking action. I found that tracking basketball was effortless even in mixed light. You can see that every shot is perfectly focused. I also found incredible event performance where regardless of the face's direction, tracking was utterly effortless. It was a little less effective in trying to track the very erratic movement of butterflies, but I suspect that that's true of just about any camera. I love a new feature, and that is the auto subject detection, which rather than having to select a particular subject, you can put it in auto mode and let the camera decide what should be tracked. And I found that it worked very well. This is the feature I would love to see on Sony cameras. I also found an extremely effective low light focusing down to minus six exposure value. One thing I noted is that I could actually auto focus on stars when shooting astrophotography, which is really rare for me. I also found the video AF worked exceptionally good. This is a great focus system, and so if you're using compressed RAW, you can have an effective sports camera on a budget. Video specs are also improved with up to 4K 60 with 6K oversampling and a full sensor readout, unlike the Sony A7 Mark IV, which has a crop factor at 4K 60. There are also APS-C modes that are available. Canon has also vastly improved the overheating issues that plagued both the R6 and the R5, and now we have no recording limit on videos. You can record up to 180 frames per second at full HD for slow motion work. Of course, we have Canon's Log3 profile along with HDR PQ to give you some more advanced video specs, and now the Mark II can output a 6K ProRes RAW format to an Atmos Ninja recorder. As noted, we have an all-new 24-megapixel CMOS sensor, and I found in my test that there is slightly improved dynamic range and also ISO performance. I found that I could recover easily four stops of shadows and even up to five with almost no penalty, and I could recover between two and three stops of highlights, adding up to a sensor that is in Canon's top three for dynamic range performance. I was particularly impressed with the ISO performance, and as I racked up through the various ISO sh settings, I found that I could shoot at ISO 3200 and even 6400 with what seemed like very little penalty in real-world use, and 12,800 and even up to 25,600 was useful. The native range goes all the way up to 102,400, and while I wouldn't use those images, I did find that the camera sensor never fell apart. While 24 megapixels is not a particularly high resolution point, it does produce very highly detailed images that is better than average for a 24 megapixel sensor. All in all, I was very happy with color rendition and the look of images I was able to record on the sensor. At the end of the day, this is a very well-rounded camera that does pretty much everything well. And while I would personally prefer a higher resolution point, I will note that this is a lot of camera for the money. I think at 30 megapixels or so, it would have been a home run. Probably the greatest strength of the R6 Mark II is that it is a very effective budget sports camera relative to the competition. That extremely high burst rate, great ergonomics, and great focus system allow it to really capture the action. At the end of the day, if you've got around $2,500 to spend and don't need higher resolution, the EOS R6 Mark II makes a whole lot of sense. I'm Dustin Abbott, and if you want my full text review, you can look in the description down below. You can also watch my definitive video review for a deeper dive into all areas of performance. Please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Have a great day, and let the light in.